Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. My name's Kevin, and today we're gonna briefly debrief my favorite parts of Elon's Starship presentation from last weekend. And then the everyday astronaut will join us and he'll share what his experience was like to interview Elon after the presentation. This is something that everybody in the SpaceX community wanted to see for a long time now. We'll discuss the current status and the new developments of Starship as it prepares for its upcoming 20 kilometer flight. Then we'll go over some near future SpaceX missions. Then we'll finish with today's honorable mention. Let's get into it. All right, so last weekend I attended Elon's Starship presentation in Boca Chica, Texas. And before the festivities began, a couple of us were gathered around in front of the Stargate building and noticed that Elon, in his adventurous spirit, was on a cherry picker next to Starship. And from the distance we were at, it looked like he kept crawling inside the vehicle. He later tweeted what he saw when he stuck his head through the porthole of the hall, and it wasn't exactly a scene from passengers. But not to worry, the product version will be a lot more polished than this prototype. Still, I wouldn't expect to have a waterfall on board, nor would I want one in zero G. Anyway, once we were carted off to see Starship at the SpaceX facility, we got to see the rocket up close for ourselves. Then it was only a matter of passing the time until Elon came out to play. I won't be covering any of the updates that Elon mentioned during his Starship presentation in today's episode. For that, I already went ahead and put together a mini documentary that entails the entire history of Starship's development. If you're interested, and I think you should be, I hear it's really good. I'll go ahead and put a link in the corner here, as well as in the description below. I do, however, want to show you my two favorite parts of the evening's festivities. The first being the only part of Elon's speech that I quoted on Twitter. <laughs> the cows are confused. <laughs> it cracks me up so much, I don't even know why. And of course, the second being Elon's fist pump. To Mars. Exactly. <laughs> Another bit of Elon's humor was captured by CNN Business when they asked for his response to Jim Bridenstine's apparent dig at SpaceX when he said commercial crew is years behind schedule and that NASA expects to see the same level of enthusiasm focused on the investments of the American taxpayer. Did you say commercial crew or SLS? He said commercial crew. Oh, okay, jeez. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> interchangeable. <laughs> Personally, I love the long laugh here. <laughs> um. Bridenstine did just tweet the other day that he had a great phone call with Musk and that he's looking forward to visiting Hawthorne next week. Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, who I finally had the pleasure of meeting at the event, also got an interview with Elon. So I turned it into a three-way and interviewed the interviewer on what the whole experience was like. Kevin, what's up, man? How's it going? To be perfectly honest, like, it's like exactly what I expected. Um, you know, I've seen enough of his content, enough uh, interviews with him and things like that. And, um, and I think, I know it sounds really cheesy, but I think honestly having a handful of Twitter conversations did help to just kind of normalize that and make it so it wasn't this like terrifying thing. So by the time we met, it was kind of like, oh yeah, he likes to talk. And I, people didn't want to hear me talk. They wanted to hear him talk. And I wanted to just try to get him uncorked and try to like let him go on these long tangents and try because he sometimes has those little pauses and that's him churning on something else. And normally like another thing is going to spew out. And it was important to me to be like, I want to let him do that. Like, I want to give him room to just talk about what he wants to talk about in that moment. And so it was a little, it was a little, that, that's what I was most nervous about is like, I had a list of questions prepared if I wanted them, but honestly, I walked into it without even thinking about the questions. Just like, I'm just going to talk to him and see what comes out. And in my opinion, I really liked it because it's a lot more personal look um, at him and at him in the moment, you know, especially right after Starship, uh, the event. So um, it was it was really fun. I was quite honored that I got time with them. I mean, that's obviously a pretty big asset right now. So, yeah, um, I had a great time meeting you. I had an awesome time at the event. Um, I'm really proud of your channel and how fast it's grown and how hard and dedicated you are to working on your channel. Because um, I know what that grind's like, and especially doing like a weekly thing or multi-day week thing, it's, it's hard. It's hard to stay totally on top of it and track down all those things and you do a really good job. You're what I watch at lunch to make sure I'm not falling behind on the current SpaceX news. So uh, nice meeting you and I'm sure we'll meet again. Take it easy. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. I'm sorry, I'm not used to such kindness and affection. I mean, you've all met my wife, Carrie. Oh yeah, she's gonna kill me. Seriously, Tim is an all around good guy. Just a decent human being to his core and so supportive. He was right beside me throughout the presentation, keeping an eye on me just to make sure I didn't wander off and get lost in the desert. And yeah, this job does take a lot of hard work and a lot of time to do as anyone that edits videos can tell you. 
But the thing is, Tim puts together these lengthy, well done documentaries that just blow my mind. I mean, and, and when I was with him, I asked him, Tim, how many people do you have working for you? He's like, no, it's just me. I couldn't believe it because he not only does all the editing and the filming and shooting and sure he might have a cameraman help him out, but um, he also does anim his own animations now. So he taught himself, I think it's Adobe Illustrator. I can't, no, it's just way above my level. So if you haven't watched Tim's stuff or his interview with Elon Musk yet, I'm putting a link down in the description. Please click on it and support him. As for me, after the presentation, I met up with Lewis from Lab Padre, as well as Austin Barnard from Twitter, and they showed me the super rad pics they got to take with Elon, so congrats, fellas. That's really cool and exciting. I wanna publicly thank SpaceX and their media team for inviting me out to this presentation, especially Kelsey, who, like Tim, is the nicest person I've ever met. It must have been my lucky weekend or something, meeting the nicest two people in the world. And I also wanna thank the Brownsville locals and the SpaceX contractors currently building Starship. I'm a huge fan of their work and apparently they are of mine as well, which just amazes me. As if working on Starship in 100 degree weather and 110% humidity didn't satisfy their cravings for Starship enough. But now that the long awaited presentation has passed, Starship is now back in two pieces and work continues as the 20 kilometer flight approaches sometime within the next month. Elon tweeted that if the 20 kilometer works, then they'll go straight to orbital launches, which means don't be surprised if you start seeing the super heavy booster come together real soon. I'm sorry, I have to interject here. I hope that all my viewers realize that although Starhopper is retired and the presentation that we long been waiting for is now over, we're not done yet. We're not gonna have this huge gap in the timeline where nothing gets done and we're just all bored waiting around for the next big thing. This momentum is continuous. The 20 kilometer flight is coming soon, followed shortly by Mark II and Mark III flights, and then Mark IV, V, and VI, all within the next six or seven months. And then on top of that, we still have Starlink, Crew Dragon, and other Falcon flights. SpaceX is busy, so get on the hype train before it pulls out. That's what she said. <clears throat> Elon says the first payload for Starship Super Heavy will be Starlink and some other fun things. God knows what that could mean coming from a guy who launched a Hot Wheels Tesla Roadster on the dashboard of a real Tesla Roadster. SpaceX.com now has an elaborate Starship page you can visit and check out all the different future variations of the spacecraft from a dedicated satellite carrier to an interplanetary human transport vessel. I guess you could say the only slightly negative news this week is that the move of the Mark II Starship prototype from Coco to the Cape has been pushed from September to this month or next month, according to a letter of essentiality filed by SpaceX to the Florida Department of Transportation. Over the past week, SpaceX has been awarded several new contracts. They received a $3 million contract concerning the experimentation with coupler prototypes for in-space refueling, a contract for researching lunar refueling, and a new mission from Intuitive Machines to launch their lunar lander called Nova C to the moon's surface in 2021 on a Falcon 9. NASA commercial crew tweeted out an update for Crew Dragon's upcoming in-flight abort test. Both the capsule and the rocket to be used for the launch have arrived at Cape Canaveral, Florida. There's still no official launch date at this time, but mid-November is the current assumption. The next SpaceX launch to be expected is Starlink 1 on October 17th, followed by Starlink 2 next month, with of course the Starship 20 kilometer flight somewhere in between. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. So it's been five months since Blue Origin has launched one of their new Shepard rockets from the West Texas desert, which comes as a surprise given the fact that the company was expecting to place their first human passengers on a suborbital flight by the end of the year. But it seems that may no longer be the case. TechCrunch interviewed Blue Origin CEO Bob Smith this week and learned that while Blue Origin is remaining hopeful for a 2019 passenger launch, it is more likely to be pushed to 2020 since there is only a few months left until the new year. And as the company inches closer to human rated flights, progress is slowing to aid in avoiding any accidental safety oversights and development. Honestly, we're in the position of where we've actually tapped the brakes a little bit. and We're just going through all of our systems and making sure that we actually have all those systems right. And we have two flights that we're gonna do before we actually go fly, at least two flights, mm -hmm. uh, before we go uh, fly humans on that. If those flights go really well, then we may be able to actually get uh, people up relatively soon. If not, we're just gonna methodically go through that and make sure that uh, we're only gonna fly when we're safe. New Shepard is a single stage launch vehicle with a capsule that can take six passengers to the edge of space and back. It has launched 11 times to date and even completed an in-flight abort test of its own. Nice and stable. Landing gear deploying. There you go. Wow. There it 
is touchdown. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until the next one, Godspeed. These SpaceX and the News episodes are made possible by the generous donations of my Patreon members. And if you'd like to see even more space-eccentric content, consider becoming a Patreon yourself. Even a dollar a month will get you access to exclusive videos not available here on YouTube. There's a link in the description. And God bless, my friend.